This is Jean Gouy. He's from Z-Spas, the manufacturer of our mast. Today I'm going to tell you about a warranty issue that Z-Spas helped us fix and what they taught us about our rigging. Yesterday, Trent and Tynan were going through with the Dillon tension meter, checking the tensions, and they noticed that one was a little bit out and then they found that one of the wires has snapped. It's concerning because this boat's only a year and a half old and I think if I did the calculations it has spent more time in marinas and on hard stands than it has actually in the water. We now have the length for the shroud that I need to replace and it's time to find a rigger who can do that. So the broken piece is on the port side. It's just down the bottom here on the inner crap shroud. Cool. So you see right there, it's actually broken inside so that's really, really strange. Um, we, yeah, other than manufacturing defect, we can't really come up with why this has happened. We're just gonna have to find a rigger, get this sorted, get it installed, and then we'll hopefully not be too delayed on this crossing. We check our rigging frequently, and it seemed that this strand had broken while we were in the marina in Gibraltar. The cable didn't have an ID stamped onto them and we don't know the history of the rigging other than it's just what came with the yacht from Robertson and Kane in Cape Town. We were meant to be leaving Europe within the next week so immediately began reaching out to riggers to see who could replace the shroud on short notice, how quickly they could do it and for what price. Trent also reached out to other leopard owners to see what they thought of the issue. The same day David Flynn from Leopard Australia emailed Trent wishing him a happy new years checking in on what our travel plans were because he was actually going to be in Europe himself soon and telling Trent that if there's anything we needed to just let him know. At this stage I'd only ever spoken to Leopard in South Africa but I knew that David was broke. I knew that David was aware of our issues with Robertson and Kane perhaps more than most so I called him. I decided to let him know about the shroud and just see if he had any contacts in the area who might be able to help us resolve the issue. David said that he wanted to help, he asked me to send through a few photos and he very quickly came back with a solution. He put us into direct contact with Remy who is the Director General of Z-Spars in France. Due to the circumstances surrounding our mast, Remy wanted to send out his rigging expert Jean Gouy to replace the lower shroud and do a complete check of our mast for technical issues. We accepted this offer for help and organised for Jean Gouy to come out in what turned out to be an incredibly educational and enjoyable day. So we're here today with um, Z Spa, uh, Jean Guillaume, uh, and he was just checking out our tension meter that replicates Robertson and Kane's tension meter. And uh, we're getting some advice on further ways to program ours, which is cool. And this is, that's his, that's his quick check there. And his does the internal diamond configuration as well. <laughs> so Jean Guillaume has his uh, tension <laughs> meter. <laughs> and um, so the, the process of taking the mast off is you take the tension off the inner shrouds and then you take the tension off the outer shrouds then you take the inner shrouds off you disconnect them and then you hook the crane up and take the outer shrouds off Four Oh, you gotta take the foresail off yeah yeah otherwise your crane's not going very far but the main thing is how you do them up <laughs> that it's more important how you do them up. Yeah. <laughs> so to do them up, which is the process we've been told, but the, this hearing it from the manufacturer is carries a lot more weight than hearing it secondhand. So to put it back on, the mast and the forestay goes on while attached to the crane. Then you put the outside shrouds on, the mast and the forestay with the yes. crane. Yes. You put the force stay on. Was it first? Yep. The force stay. Then you, the mast is seated. The then you put the outside shrouds on. Yes. Yep. And then the go to go to three quarters. Yeah. Tension, which is about two thousand. Two thousand and seven hundred. Roughly. Seven hundred. That's full tension. Yes, full yeah, tension. Yeah. So you take don't you take them the full tension straight away? You can because uh, after, for me, I prefer to put the full tension yeah. because the cab the wire was new. 
and after oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, when if everything is new. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And uh, after a um, couple of uh, navigation between uh, 15 and 20 knots uh, in uh, three or four hours, you lose about uh, 200 or 300 uh, kilos, and you are between the tolerance, the minimum yeah. loud and the yeah. maximum loud. We'll post the spec sheet so people know the the numbers that we're talking mm. about. So what uh, what he's saying is you then tension the the cap shrouds to base basically to full tension depending on the age of them whether it's going on new. But I mean, speaking to other owners, they'll be going on second hand. So you don't go to the new tension. You go to about two six. So then once the outside caps are on, you then put the inside ones on and you can tension them I guess to full tension and then you have to recheck the outside shrouds because the inside shrouds could potentially pull a bit of tension off the outside ones and so you go outside outside inside inside and just get it right and that's it. As you can see behind me Trent's up in the helm and that's because he's going to lift Willem up the mast and he's going to replace the shrug and then also check the rest of our rigging just to see if there's any other issues as well as the actual mast itself. Note here that Jean Gui has safety lines attached to himself for whatever he's working with including his tools just in case something is dropped. It obviously then can't fall down to the deck which is important if you're ever working on your own rigging. Diamond. One, it's too bending, that's too tight, that's why the mast is too bending. And the um, external wire and your spreader bend go down, and they have to stay straight. At the moment he's just adjusting the tension on the diamond on our mast because when he was up there doing the shroud cap he noticed that the spreaders were getting pulled down and that's because of the diamond so he is adjusting it to how it should be and how the spreaders should sit. So you can see the diamond on the mast there and that's something that we've never adjusted or checked because we were told in Cape Town that we'd never need to. The diamond and the pre bend was way too tight just hoping now that the turnbuckle's not cross-threaded because the, the mast had way too much pre-bend and the spreaders were angled right down. And you never checked that because you were told explicitly uh, we not told, to? We told them that they need to check it and they said no. It's something that's supposed to be set at the start and never touched again, yeah? Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be tension checked at the start, which they've not done. Tynan's now putting Jean Guim up to the top of the mask and he's then going to come down it checking every single little thing. After that he wants to tension the rigging including the new shroud cap and then go back over the diamond and check the mask bend again. So he's being really thorough which we really appreciate. The track, yeah. but the, the sail goes on, yeah that. They were, there were gaps and there were big, like the cuts were like this and the sail wouldn't go up and down and it just gets stuck. Oh. So me and a guy, myself and a guy from Robertson and Kane had to, at 9pm at night, had to get them all off and try with the grinder to flatten them because the sail wouldn't go up and down from handover. Because it's blocked here. What is it? Because it's blocked where? Here? It's what's blocked here. All the way up and down. Every single join was like a big gap and wrong. Wow. All of it. The whole track That's came it. off. But uh, actually, it's good. Yeah, we fixed it. Yeah. When he uses his meter next time, we'll use mine and see how far apart they are, just out of curiosity. Oh, right, at the same time. Yeah, just, just like one after the other. Is that zero? Yeah. Yeah, 3,100. Up a bit. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't think it's I zeroed it. It's exactly the same. I don't think I zeroed it. Oh no, I zeroed. Was it the same? Yeah. Sorry, what? Uh, it's, um, 40 kilos difference. Me, I have uh, 3060 and you have uh, 
3,100. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's uh, worked nice. At yeah. what point do you start doing one, two, or like you want? The best is to do a U turn with your hand. Uh, the first size, when you cannot with your hand, you stop, you go to the other way, yeah, other yeah. size, you do the same. Yeah. After you, you take the, um, the meter, the type, the type yeah. meter, yeah. you equilibrate uh, starboard and uh, what did you measure between the chain? Did you go from, was it the pin? Yes, you have to keep to have the same repair to yeah. both sides. So you just pin, go from pin the, to pin. The, the, the pin to pin, what? Pin, pin to, to pin. pin. Yes. Yeah, pin to pin. But so at this the beginning pin, you have to... So this pin. Mm. At the beginning the you have to engage. You have to engage before the... In each size of yeah. the tunnel buckle is the same time. So the, the threads in the turnbuckle will have to be the same distance yes. so you need to set that before you even attach it to the chain plate and after you, you set the length and after you can take a measurement between the two pins yeah you do the same to the other side and after like you want you start from one side and you t you, you count half yeah. one one and a half two two and a half you fair, you do you repeat these things uh, five times at the beginning five times the other side yeah and at the end it's two times and two times to have the maximum uh, tension that we preconize. Yeah. Okay, on the paper. And to be straight. Okay. Yeah. Now we put uh, three thousand. Yeah. So it's a bit more than we preconize. But when we put some tension on this, yeah. You will see in a few minutes the capsule decrease a little bit. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they do. And yeah. when we when we put some tension on this, yeah. the bending of the mast, uh, it's released a little bit, and the di the tension of the diamond increase. Ah. Because yeah. you know, actually, we are like that. Yeah. With this one, we tight the mast to the back, and the the, so the diamond. So he's he's reduced the pre bend because it was way too tight. So the, the disconnect, the place where of Cape Town is getting it wrong, and the instructions I was sent, which are wrong, as they say, bring the external shrouds to three quarter tension. So what happens in reality is the riggers, they'll wind that, to, they'll, they'll, they'll do them up lightly, like, and then they'll wind this to three quarters and then that to three quarters. But what he's saying, to, to stop the mast twisting, which you see, almost every boat has got a twisted mast. You have to do these up with your hand and then stop and then go two turns, two turns, two turns, two which turns. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, which yeah but it, that's mm. what they're not doing because yeah. it's extra work to have to walk around the boat. <laughs> so they just wind this one up until yeah. it's almost there. And then they wind that one up till it's almost there and then the mast. <laughs> you know, with some, um, uh, some uh, Outremer or Katana, yeah. Katamarans, um, they don't want, after the mast is on, they don't want to go on a mast to finalize, to finalize the tension of the diamonds. Yeah. That's why they put uh, the mast uh, the horizontal, they put some two pairs, okay? and uh, they measure the bending of the mast on the ground because they know with the experience that if they're bending the mast with this measure, when the mast is on and they pull some tension of the capsule and the inside one, the bending was perfect, the diamond was perfect and everything is cool. Yeah. And nobody has to go on the mast when the mast is on. I'd love to okay, give them that much credit. It's just because they, they know uh, I would I would love to give them that much credit. He said was the best political politically correct answer I have ever heard. <laughs> you should be a politician. That was just so perfect. Like, like I think um because I keep getting the same story from everybody, the same description of how to do it, which is not correct. So like people can't be just perpetuating the same 
story without a reason. Someone must have started it from somewhere. Have you noticed how he wraps it in the, the plastic tape as well? In the market. Which they don't do in Cape Town, so they don't um, oh, scratch damage the, the coating. Yeah. So he's wherever he's going to use a tool, he's pre-wrapped the surface with, with protective tape. Mm -hmm. So Jean pre-wraps any surface he's going to work on with tape so that he doesn't um, scratch the coating, which obviously helps give it resilience in a marine environment. So instead of just sticking the tool on and doing what other people have done and destroying the coating, which then I guess the two metals are going to react with each other and cause corrosion, which is what's been done here. It's damage to the coating on a new boat, which was done in Cape Town. He wraps the turnbuckle to protect it from the tool, which is, is excellent and it's great. And I mean, that's the condition you should get a new boat in when it's been wrapped like this and then worked on properly. It doesn't only takes a minute of your time to do something properly. So the thing is, is Jean didn't, he didn't point this out or point any damage out. We just noticed that he protects the work surface that he's working on. It's not the standard to damage things. The standard is to be a professional, like C Spar has just sent out to rectify this warranty issue. So you can just see here on the edge where it's damaged and um, both sides are like it. I mean, it's been like that from the beginning. Imagine if you worked on someone's Ferrari and you, every time you worked on it, you ripped the outer coatings off the alloy wheels. Well, it's because they use a bar. I thought they used a steel bar. What he's using a shift off. See here? Uh, no, They've it's cracked the coating off. Yeah, from uh, from not doing this, yeah. we just watch what you did. Like you this, know me, uh, this I, is what a professional I use, does. Yeah, this I, what, I use this and yeah. uh, all my keys. Uh, Clean there. Yeah. No, round. I I uh, oh, you rounded. I, I yeah. send it. You know. Yeah. It's not yeah. when I buy it. It's uh, too like a knife. Cut, cut. So this this is what a this is what a professional looks like. He's rounded the sides of the spanner as well. Not this one because this yeah. one is yeah. right for as well, so, so that the thought. spanner <laughs> doesn't damage the turnbuckle like other people have damaged it. And it's not hard. Like you do this every day. You think you do things like this. You know what I mean? Like when I was in, when I was working, like you, it's not hard, is it? It's just good to see that that there's still some people that actually care about kind of just basic quality of work and leaving the place how you found it. Like, if you work on a new turnbuckle, you don't leave it with a bunch of the coating ripped off. You leave it how you found it. So what he's doing now is that's how you sight the mast. You don't stand on the bow and, and ogle it from the front. This is so great because you know all the stuff about this <laughs> and, and just seeing how you do everything and how logical and rational and careful oh, you, yeah. and how good it all is and having seen the revolving door of clowns that we've had to deal with before today. Like this, this is how they suck them up. And if you, you see it, you see at the, at the beginning of uh, the day when I'm arrived, uh, the, the front of the mass foot yeah, yeah. it's in contact with the ground pressure. And uh, now it's a little bit open. It's just because at the beginning this morning that the mass is too bending. And uh, when you bend the mass, you know, the, the front of the mass touch the amplitude. Now it's more equilibrated. It's, it's good. It's nice. So I watched the final edit of this video that Talisha did, and um, I noticed there was no footage of the Tef gel. So this is what you want to have on every on every threaded surface on your rigging.
uh, the easiest way to apply it, we found, is to keep an old toothbrush. So you can just wipe the teth gel into all the threads, which is cool. So, where this tape is here, normally there's teth gel, but because we're removing the mask soon, because our mask doesn't seem to enjoy being on, <laughs> um, we put tape and marked it for various reasons. So anywhere that these soft metallic surfaces are contacting each other, it needs to be lubricated with Tef Gel. Inside of here should be Tef Gel, which also acts as a uh, galvanic corrosion inhibitor. Now, this is not the last video you'll see about our mast because Robertson and Kane, Leopard Catamarans and Trent are still negotiating about what the fastest, most effective way to rectify the mask is. What we want is the easiest, simplest, safest solution, and that may not be a total mask replacement. I just wanted to add for viewers who have been following along with our mask series that we now have proof that it was Robertson and Kane who damaged our masks, installing various fittings in the incorrect position and leaving holes in some places, and irreparably damaging internal components in other places. So there's no room for speculation or doubt or, you know, no two sides of the story or someone else to blame. It wasn't Z-Spars. And it wasn't Leopard Aftermarket who handled the lightning protection system installation. We greatly appreciate the actions of David Flynn from Leopard Catamarans and Remy and jean Guy from Z-Spars. The value in his visit was not in the 490 euros that it would have cost to replace the shroud. Instead, the value is in having somebody who is so knowledgeable come aboard and be willing to take the time to educate owners who they can see have an interest in learning the subject matter. So we are incredibly grateful for that. Thank you, Zhongui. And I would have to say that if you ever have the opportunity to have somebody like him on your boat, absolutely take them up on it because it's an invaluable way to learn more about the products and systems that we have on our boats and we rely on. The information he gave us and just the peace of mind of knowing that our rig was safe before we crossed the Atlantic Ocean was invaluable. So moving forward I really hope that Leopard Catamarans continue to take decisive action like David did so that this mass saga can come to a constructive conclusion.